In our series, Three Meals, we travel to different states to break bread with voters and hear what's on their minds. The 2020 presidential campaign marks a big milestone for the state of New Hampshire. It's the 100th year the first presidential primary will be held there. CBS News contributor Steve Inskeep of NPR's Morning Edition and Up First podcast crossed the state to see what voters are thinking. Steve, what'd they tell you? Hey, good morning. We wanted an unfiltered look at the state, so we bypassed campaign events, didn't see a single one of the candidates who flood New Hampshire this time of year, and took a road trip. We stopped for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and whoever we met is who you will meet now, starting in Gorham, New Hampshire. This town in New Hampshire's White Mountains is home to Welsh's Restaurant. <laughs> Vicki Bird is a waitress. Are you a lifelong resident around here? I was born and raised. And Richard Wallingford eats on his way to work in his interior design store. We've had good times, we've had bad times. Is this a good time or a bad time? Hey, we're peaking the top. Honestly, there's not enough people to work right now. Uh -huh. I mean, people are coming and going, you can't get help. Statewide unemployment is two and a half percent, and yet... Uh, look at the news this morning. When we visited, news was spreading of an attack on oil facilities in Saudi Arabia. That will affect us, yeah. you know, so it's just, I feel like we're on the edge of a war, uh, and it, it is pretty, it's pretty scary right now. Do you worry about the trade war at all, and how it might affect you? Uh, it has. A lot of materials are very difficult to get. The prices have increased uh, tremendously. After breakfast, we've headed southward through the White Mountain National Forest, which feels so remote. But as we heard from the shopkeepers selling products from China, it is connected to the global economy. Some of the rules of the global financial system were made here at the Mount Washington Hotel at a conference back in 1944. This is the system that has lasted ever since and that's being challenged in these days of trade wars and nationalism. Here in Manchester, New Hampshire, these old mill buildings, which once made the city a world leader in textiles, have now filled with more modern global industries. And when people get a chance to take lunch, they might go to Casey's Rib Shack Barbecue, which is our next stop. It's baked beans, pulled pork, coleslaw. Lynn Verfai is an artist who reshapes old pieces of furniture. So you might take my busted dresser and turn it into a work of art. Absolutely. She gets health benefits through her husband, Shannon, who works for a defense contractor. Our health care system is broken without a doubt. I myself have foregone medical care when I needed it because of the expense of it. Do you want the government to do something about that? I, d I want the government to do something about that, but I do not want socialized medicine. So when you hear Democrats... Don't get me started. I've already got you started. <laughs> Don't get me started. When you hear Democrats say Medicare for all, you think, no. I think it's a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I really think it's a bad idea. This is a Republican family. Lynn's son, Kean supports the Republican president's crackdown on illegal immigration, yet he feels it's gone too far. The ones who are getting caught, they're... They are getting thrown in cages. Merge off towards Portsmouth. We have come a long way in this small state from the White Mountains down to the coastal plains where we're heading for Portsmouth, this state's traditional opening to the wider world. Tourists mix with locals at the River House. Democrats Lynn Pallarino and Ken Bowles are ready to vote for anyone but the president. You can have a four-year mistake, but eight years is a pattern. And they've been talking through the alternatives. Who would you vote for? Well, if it were Biden and Warren, yeah, we'd think that's a really good ticket. Oh, well, I meant Biden or Warren. Yeah, I know. I, would you vote for either? 
I'm not sure yet. I know this change is possible. She's not sure about Elizabeth Warren because Warren endorsed Medicare for All. She's Medicare for All, but she doesn't believe in keeping the private insurance. She better take that back. I know. She better take that back. Why? You don't agree with that? I don't. I don't. I think people, somehow they got to work it out so people yeah. can keep their insurance. You can't take away from Americans and expect them to vote for her. You just can't. She's got to back off that. As you can hear, these Democrats are trying to pick a winner and desperate to do. You may have noticed whether they're leaning right or leaning ref, left. People know that times are good in New Hampshire, but they're really worried about times. It's so to interesting with two and a half percent unemployment statewide, yeah. you've still got that much discontent. A lot of anxiety about the future. It's also interesting that with health care, people want the government to do something, but don't call it socialism. Which is really right. common. That's what makes that issue so tricky for any politician. They're it's a big sticking to point. see the process, how people go about making up their minds yeah. Yeah. and what matters to them and what resonates and what doesn't. Yeah, they have their practical problems in their lives, but also their ideology. And with that woman in the middle, that's in a little bit of conflict. She wants help with health care, doesn't want the government to do too much. And the guy who said, we need a president that doesn't tweet, I thought that was interesting. <laughs> yeah. Tweeting should be banned. Yeah, so he said. Yeah, I heard him. Steve, thank you.